there I was, relaxing on a cosy Sunday evening, snuggled up in bed with my kiddies who were sleeping while I blissfully surfed Google Scholar. Suddenly, and it was almost worth sitting upright in bed, I found an outrageously fabulous journal article about qualitative research and perioperative anaesthesia. Jisselbake, Hiddleston, and Seville Dali published this paper at the end of 2021. 19 months later, I surfed upon it. I've been getting this impression over the last 20 years of what folk are up to in terms of qualitative research in the perioperative setting, and these impressions are confirmed by the paper. First up, there are 107 articles included in the review. Now that is a lot. When we undertake structured reviews of literature, we usually want to end up with between 10 and 40 papers. Aside from any other reason why, it makes it quicker to write up and easier to synthesize key messages from the data. But these folk are really giving us a comprehensive picture with 107 papers included. You can see the number of qualitative research studies published has increased from almost nothing 20 years ago to about 12 papers or so from 2016 onwards. In the last five years, there'll no doubt be more. Qualitative research is increasing in popularity. Basically, everybody's doing it. This paper found research topics most represented in the literature include patient safety, barriers to evidence-based medicine, patient experiences under local regional anesthesia, training and practice, patient experiences of care implementation of changes in clinical practice. Almost half of the publications were in anesthesiology specific journals, about 53 papers. 79% of the research teams included one or more nurse anesthetists or anesthesiologists and 5% of studies were conducted by a single author, whereas 55% of the articles included at least one author with education in a non-medical or non-nursing non science, such as the social sciences, education, uh, psychology, technology. In other words, most research teams included topic specialists and research method specialists which is a great way to ensure that your research hits the right marks. On page 1815, they write, most of the articles in our review reported on qualitative single method studies. Only 16 articles reported on mixed method studies. We extracted the keywords used by the authors to refer to their theoretical methodological approach. In nearly half of the publications, no particular methodological approach was mentioned. Ouch. Keywords used in the remaining articles included ethnography, phenomenology, grounded theory, and qualitative description, and phenomenography. What methodologies are folks using? Well, general purpose, qualitative research with thematic analysis tops the charts with a, by a long shot. This likely reflects that you don't need to have a complex understanding of philosophy for this one and that if you follow the methods of thematic analysis, you're likely to arrive at findings that you can defend. Content analysis comes up pretty often. This is also based on a general purpose qualitative approach, which basically means inductive, interpretive. I'm not a fan of content analysis because in my view, it tends to encourage oversimplification of complex issues by focusing on the number of times words or concepts come up in what a person or text says. If you have been trained in a positivist paradigm, then this one can be especially difficult to navigate because of the numerical aspect to it. Grounded theory comes in at 6.5%. This may reflect that it's a big time commitment and it takes a long time to do, it's hard to do, and you need a reasonably sophisticated understanding of social theory. I wanted to know how papers managed to get published if they did not report an analysis method. So I went for a deep dive into the paper and included uh, and looked at the literature. After 45 minutes of hunting, I was not able to figure out which papers were reported to have had no analysis reported. And so I gave up. To be fair, it was getting late. 